Hi, I'm Nan Simonson. I'm the author of Aging Powerfully, a book I wrote um, just in time for my 70th birthday. And that was nearly, well, about 10 months ago. And I've been doing a Facebook Live this entire year um, to share with those who might be interested in the journey I've taken, but also the mission that I have um, as the cornerstone of my book, and that is a mission to help people realize that through lifestyle modalities, those things that we are in control of, we can prevent the chronic diseases that we see around us that are 80% lifestyle, things that we take for granted that happen as we get older. And I intend to go into my 80s and 90s and beyond, um, God willing, um, because of choices that I make on a daily basis. And so I share those in one way or another. And today I wanted to share something with you that I came across. And I think you know that I have people in my life I pay a lot of attention to. If you read or if you read Aging Powerfully, you'll see that I recommend a number of experts whom I trust who are trusted by other experts whom I trust. Um, and one of the people that I listen to the most is the founder, a, actually co-founder of the College of Lifestyle Medicine and the founder of the practice that I work through as a health and lifestyle coach, and that is Dr. Wayne Dysinger. Um, I came across a term recently, and it is, it was, it's, you can Google it, but it's more complex than I'm going to lay out, and I'm going to lay out a simple explanation, and that term is central pattern generator, uh, a set of neurons in our body that have a lot to do with what I'm going to talk about today. If you've looked at my past uh, Facebook Live uh, presentations on my YouTube channel or on my um, Power Agers Facebook group. I've been talking about having set a goal a few months before I lived out the result of that goal. Set the goal to run a, a 10K I'd never run before. I ran the race in spite of uh, injury uh, to my knee, not because of running, but other things that I did. And what that did for me and to me in terms of understanding possibilities and setting me up as it would you for more and more of the same because of a neurotransmitter that is so powerful that most people don't understand how not only powerful it is, but how dependable it is in helping us set goals move toward them, make things happen, and then rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And that is the neurotransmitter dopamine. So I'm going to begin today with just some basic fundamentals that I've adopted and that are science-based. And the person that I've been paying a lot of attention to as it relates to neurotransmitters, to workings of the mind, which therefore are going to lead to um, the way we choose to make decisions in our life that affect us for, well, not only our current status, but also for that of um, decades to come. And that is Dr. Andrew Huberman, a neurobiologist, a neuroscientist with his own lab at Stanford University. He is a tenured professor there and has a ream of accolades um, that follow him. And these are some of the thoughts that I want to share that I have heard from him recently. He says it all the time, don't expect your mind to affect your mind. It's hard to change your mind with your mind. Use your body 
to affect and focus your mind. We can do that in ways that are very controllable like breathing and you've heard me talk about the physiologic sigh that can calm us down to quick deep inhales a longer exhale that that fills the avioli in our lungs displaces carbon dioxide calms us down thing that can excite us and add more energy and that's like the Wim, Wim Hof breathing <laughs> that almost panting breathing which you don't you have to be careful about because it can kind of knock you out um, to add more I'll call it stamina and energy um, you've heard of box breathing the um, I po uh, possibly you have four in hold four out hold four in and that's a box of four counts and that's used by a lot of the elite military people like naval seals and then the something that i learned from dr weil um that i use i use it all the time to again calm down because the longer breaths calm you down the deeper inhales with the shorter faster breaths uh, create a, additional excitement or energy or I won't even say anxiety, but kind of pump you up. And so the four, seven, eight that Dr. Wilde taught, I loved, which is four breaths in, but a full four. I mean, a full, a quick, but a full four um, to get, to fill your lungs, not shortchange them. Hold it for seven, count of seven, exhale for eight. And that double exhale, holding it for a while, doing it four or five times is a really good way to again get rid of carbon dioxide calm you down and it can be done anytime sometimes when I wake up in the middle of the night I can't sleep I'll do a series of that and lay quietly and just feel the air around me hear the sounds around me listen to my breath and try to keep everything out of my mind and it's hard to do that and so you pay attention to the breath because you can't very easily always control the mind um, but the other thing that is an, a, a, an example of how the body affects the mind is through fitness, is through movement. Um, whatever effort comes out, you're going to see a direct link in. You move often, you want to move more often. You are looser, your body is more limber, um, your blood is flowing more readily, and your, lymph, your lymphatic system is more affected. Um, so your body is better when you move it um, and it will respond it will get stronger it's something you can depend on um, so physical pursuits become paramount over simply trying to control your mind with your mind let your body start that process so uh, one of the things that I have talked about often are the people who inspire me and I want to recommend that we all internalize the idea of role models. Think of who you admire and for reasons that are logical and that, are, that make you admire not only the life of that person but the way they got there and then what they're teaching. Um, I'll say Dr. Huberman, I'll say Dr. Uh, Will Bolshevitz, who's a, a, a gastroenterologist, I'll say the Sherzai's, Aisha, Aisha and Dean Sherzai, um, neurologist through Loma Linda University Hospital. They also have their own lab. Chef AJ, whom I have learned a lot from as I transitioned to a whole food plant-based diet, which I did for years, going um, into my fourth year. Um, internalize their ethos and in the way in such a way that it would serve you as well and then let your body help guide you and what I mean by that is because the body is the entry point to the mind set up some patterns that you become dependent on and I'll tell you what that means in other words invest in consistency um, without even realizing that that is where I found a lot of strength. I simply got in habits that made a huge difference and that was because I 
researched and came up with certain patterns that I saw repeated again and again and again by people. You begin the morning with a big glass of water. Uh, put lemon juice in it if you want. That's alkalizing, not acidifying, and that's a good start as well. Um, get out in the light. First thing in the day, it helps set your circadian clock. If you're going to be out there, move. Rather than waiting to move later on, get out there and simply move first thing in the morning. There's not any thought involved. You have your shoes, you have your workout outfits, you throw them on and you're out the door, you're rolling out. You're looking at your seven to eight hours of sleep. So you go to bed early enough so that you can wake up early enough so that you can have a pattern rather than being owned by some things outside of ourselves like a certain television program, like getting too much light late in the day, in the evening, through TV and our computers and our phones, that it excites our nervous system and makes it hard to sleep and therefore hard to wake up and therefore hard to set good patterns. Um, there is something that Dr. Huberman spoke about just recently called the central pattern generator, which again, our neurons in our spinal cord and our brain stem that generate repetitive movement. Well, if you Google central pattern generator, you'll see that those neurons are responsible for things like breathing, like heartbeat, um, rhythmic movements of our gastrointestinal system. But our brain loves those because, and loves loading our central pattern generator um, because of patterns we set up, because then it gives less for the brain to think about. So we know that it's a good idea to make a list of things we intend to do, to follow through with those lists, to feel the pleasure of the success we get and the feeling we get for checking things off of those lists. But I don't know that we've understood it physiologically. So this is a physiological reason to create patterns. For one thing, because the success that it gives us helps us release dopamine, and I've talked about this recently, that dopamine is the probably one of the most important neurotransmitters in our body. I'm reading another book, The Molecule of More, and that is dopamine. It's called The Molecule of More, and it's by Daniel Lieberman and Michael Long. It's because it not only rewards us for what we do right, but it makes us want more. That's why it's the neurotransmitter that is so key to addictions, because we get a pleasure, but that pleasure, after it has been experienced, let's say, a few times, enough times to set us up for that expectation begins to wane. And only heavier hits make us feel that same appreciation for the same thing. I'm reading the first chapter and they've gone through this whole pattern of, of human relations when from the moment that we meet someone we think will be our soulmate and how that feels to the realization down the road, oh, that feeling is gone. Well, that feeling goes because your neurotransmitters are looking for something else for another high. If you understand that, you fill it with things that you've kept control over that can make you feel good on a regular basis and affect you in a healthy way. And that's where having decided, I'm going to let my body take care of my mind. I'm going to give and create, give my, my oh, central pattern generator something to install as a habitual expectation that we don't even think about anymore to give me the end result of not only appreciating where that has taken me, you, um, but also experience the physicality of that end result, meaning better health if we've made good choices. Um, 
By doing that, we're using the most important neurological modulator we have, that dopamine, to, again, make us feel good, but then set us up to do it again and again and again. There are people all around us who just seem to be winners. They just keep doing things that are impressive. And we think, wow, what drives those people? Quite often, it's as simple as things like this. There's a man named David Goggins that people in, in I think he's, he, well, I'll finish that sentence, that people in the higher levels of um, personal development, they know who David Goggins is. He's a fellow that went through, I think, Naval SEALs, Army Rangers, um, special ops. He went through these things that would just about break down a person who simply qualified for any one of them. He went through all of them. In other words, anything that could break him, he would take on and not be broken by them. But he's also written a book about his belief in um, the power that we have to, um, to find strength in ourselves that we never thought was there. Um, I can't even remember the name of his book. If, if I was asked at another time when I'm not trying, I probably would, but I, I can't right now. But David Goggins, look him up and you'll find his book um, and maybe books by now. Uh, but there are a lot of people that we admire like that. Well, those people have this figured out. They have what I'm talking about figured out and far more. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. Understand that your habits that the things that you do habitually, that you decide you're going to do habitually because they're good for you. I don't eat processed food. I'm giving you a list. <laughs> I don't eat processed food. I restrict saturated fats. I, maybe, <laughs> am transitioning to a more whole food, plant-based dietary style because whole foods that are plant-based, all of those that, that that implies, and that is fruits, greens, leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables, all vegetables, all um, tubers, grains and legumes and seeds and nuts and spices and herbs, those things our body loves. And it loves in such a way that it makes us the healthiest we could possibly be. More than 50% more health-giving elements in plant foods than we will ever find in animal foods. So eat what you want, but understand the value of adding to your life the things that make a difference and do it habitually before you know it. These things are not an effort. You have just affected your mind, which you think is in charge of where you are in your life, but you've affected your, your but your body has affected your mind in a very positive way that simply becomes second nature. And before you know it, you're doing things that seem really easy. It's like, how did this get so easy? When it's not so easy, you just put it into auto drive, autopilot and you're living out your best self by having made some decisions and you start one step at a time. You start with a list right now that gets you started in the morning with the smartest things to do. Throughout Aging Powerfully, I have the best recommendations all in the anagram Powerfully. Each um, letter represents a modality on P being purpose, O being um, community, meaning others, W meaning whole foods, E exercise, R um, resilience, which is sleep and stress, and on and on and on. And then there are lists of things that it, make it a reference book after I told the story that includes the fact that at 18, I attempted for the second time to end my life. And it was a serious attempt. It wasn't one of these, oh, I'm crying for help. It's still a miracle that I didn't perish that day at 18, a couple months before high school graduation. And I say that because I was absolutely out of answers and had nobody to look at 
to say, you know what? Let's take one step at a time to get you out of this quagmire. Didn't know how. So I'll leave it at that. And that's all I want to say to you today. Uh, I'd love to hear what you take from this. Make your list. Think about what you can do either by Googling any given thing that you're trying to do and coming up with answers. Read my book. If you've got the book, reread it. Um, any any area that you're having trouble with and just trust that without fighting yourself mentally by taking the steps physically first getting them ingrained into your central pattern generator and then taking a serious um, uh, stand to follow through with those things that you decide you're going to do um, you walk proud and tall and I don't care if you're 20, 40, 70, 90. <laughs> You'll have a long, healthy life ahead of you. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you're having a great day because I know I'm going to. Bye-bye. Mm,